Today we are going to see about vaccines and stripes. This is one of the important areas nowadays to know about the different types of vaccines in the market and its importance and what is the purpose of different types of vaccines. Going into the vaccines, we should know something about the origination and the introducing about the background of the vaccines. In 1796, Edward Jenner is the pioneer in the vaccination program. He is called father of vaccination. He used cowpox virus as a vaccination program against smallpox. He used cowpox infected individuals get protection against the human disease smallpox. So from that the vaccination program picks up and starts in different directions. Modern vaccines typically consist of either a killed or a live non-virulent form of an infectious agent. The killed can be called inactivated, the live, the non-virulent form can be called as attenuated. So these are the two important types of vaccines which is prevalent recently. That is quite recently that is some 10 to 15 years before. Now we have different types of vaccines and the COVID has paved uh, different types of vaccines to be available in the market for emergency purpose. The problem or what is the drawbacks the current vaccine production? The main important problem or drawbacks we face the current vaccine production is not all the microbial cultures can be grown in lab. Likewise, the animal cell culture which is maintained to bring or grow the cells is very expensive. So the yield and the rate of production is very quite low. So it is also very costly. Cost effective is not there. And the virulent organisms that is which we are preparing vaccines sometimes what happen become because of insufficient attenuation they become virulent. Even after attenuation, I think they are given as a vaccine. But sometimes because this attenuation program may not be sufficient enough to make it a virulent, they can be converted into virulent form any time. Likewise, we cannot have vaccine program for all diseases. Sometimes attenuated strains also revert back. And the vaccines which we have, they will also have limited shell life. These are the few or the very important limitations we have in the vaccine production. So whoever works on this, they will have to work on these drawbacks to remove these drawbacks and make it as advantageous by increasing the shell life so that we can have a cost effective vaccine production and they can be grown easily in the lab. All these things can be practiced to make it a very good one. Solutions to remove all these type of drawbacks in the vaccine production. Solution is a recombinant DNA technology. Really this a recombinant DNA technology is a boon for this life science department. Comparatively, we can say the medical field because the virulent genes could be deleted from an infectious agent and they can become live vaccines because sometimes the live bacteria or virus cannot be given as a vaccine. They will cause a lot of havoc in the life of people. So they can be made a virulent by removing the infectious part. Likewise, live non-pathogenic carrier systems, they induce a strong immunological response against a pathologic agent. Likewise, critical antigenic determinants can be isolated, cloned and expressed in an alternative host systems because those microorganisms which cannot be cultured, from that we can have the antigenic determinants, we can isolate from that microorganisms, we can clone it we can express in some other host system to make it viable and can be used as a vaccine. 
So these are the important solution nowadays practice for the vaccine production. The important boon in this area is recombinant DNA technology, which paved way for many revolutionary things happening in this current scenario. DNA vaccines. The first vaccine produced by recombinant DNA techniques, mainly for animal diseases, foot and mouth disease, rabies, scores, diarrheal disease of pigs and cattle, they have vaccine production for this first recombinant DNA vaccines. We have different types of vaccines available in the market. For you to understand the different types, what are the types of vaccines present in the market, we should know it. That is, we have live attenuated vaccine, we have inactivated vaccines, subunit vaccines, recombinant vaccines, polysaccharide and conjugate vaccines, toxoid vaccines, DNA vaccines, RNA vaccines. So we have so many types of vaccines and we will see each type and their importance and examples for each and every type so that we understand more about each type in a detailed manner and also know the significance of each and every type. Attenuated vaccines. Here, the living virus had been weakened. How to make the living virus weakened? What we do mostly to make the live virus or the living virus weakened, we grow this in the cells, they do not normally grow. For example, if your disease occurs in rat, that, for example, that virus affects only the animals, rat. They will not grow in hen. So, if this virus was made to grow in hen, that is different to host. Sometimes they lose their virulency after many generations. This is how they make the live virus weakened or attenuated. This is ideal for teaching the immune system against specific viruses because they are close to natural infections. So these live attenuated vaccines, they often require only single immunization so they don't, we don't need any type of booster doses. So it's relatively easy to create for certain viruses. But what is the disadvantage of this live attenuated vaccine is possibility they will revert to a virulent form and cause disease. That is the biggest drawback we are having in this. This A virulent form, this live attenuated form which is weakened, sometimes it can regain its original strength and can cause evoke the organisms and kill it and other disadvantage is to be stored in refrigerator otherwise it cannot be kept outside the normal room temperature if it kept in the normal room temperature the vaccine lost loses potency and this type of vaccines cannot work with all type of bacteria only certain type of bacteria it can work that is one thing all these live attenuated is MMR vaccines, rotavirus vaccine, oral polio vaccines, influenza vaccine, varicella vaccine, shingles vaccine, yellow fever vaccine, adenovirus oral vaccine and vaccinia vaccine. All this comes under this category. Inactivation of the pathogen by heat or by chemical treatment. Mostly chemical treatment is superior compared to heat treatment. So mostly they prefer chemical treatment to make this uh, pathogen inactive. So they provide very shorter length of protection than live vaccines. So that these type of vaccines need booster doses because they give only short length of protections. So in order to create a long time of immunity in the uh, individuals, we need to give boosters. Sometimes these vaccines cannot kill all the pathogens, so severe complication can occur. This is about inactivated vaccine, hepatitis A, flu, 
polio and rabies comes under this category this type is subunit recombinant polysaccharide and conjugate vaccines they are all biosynthetic vaccines it uses only specific pieces of the pathogen they show very strong immune response so the weakened immune system and long term health problems persons can use so it is very suitable those who are having like hiv patient, patients whose immune system is not so strong enough to even a small uh, minor diseases they can also be given this type of vaccines and avoid risk concerns with attenuated or kill organism vaccines so by these type of vaccines we don't have the risk which is available or present in the attenuated or kill organism vaccines and the only limitation we can find this type of vaccine is that we need booster doses for a long term immunity that is the only thing we are having regarding this vaccines type of vaccine is hepatitis b human papilloma virus vaccine and uh, in this these are subunit vaccines and recombinant vector vaccines they use attenuated virus as vectors so they act use as a vector recombinant vaccine that is use vector for vaccination vaccines act as vaccines like example varicella likewise we have conjugate vaccine that is that is somewhat similar to recombinant vaccine but they are prepared using a combination of two different components that is very important so they are not produced with one component they produce with the two different components otherwise we can say the conjugate vaccine is a substance that is composed of a polysaccharide antigen fused to a carrier molecule why because this will enhance the stability and effectiveness of the vaccine and the conjugate vaccines are replacing the pure polysaccharides which is used in olden days now it has been replaced by these type of carrier molecules for increasing the stability and effectiveness of the vaccines vaccines it is made from selected toxins that have been sufficiently attenuated so these type of bacteria or uh, organisms they cannot be given as such because it is very highly toxic so they make this vaccine from the toxins and been sufficiently attenuated and they can able to induce humoral immune system response that is b cell lymphocytes or antibodies will be raised so purifying bacterial toxins and then inactivating the toxin with formaldehyde they form toxoid so we take the toxin out then we make it inactivate with the addition of formaldehyde to make it toxoid here also we need booster doses required multiple times in a single year example as toxoid diphtheria toxin all these things likewise subunit vaccines we are taking the purified outer surface viral proteins because they are all sufficient for uh, eliciting immune response in the host cell so vaccine that use components of the pathogenic organisms rather than the whole organism are called subunit vaccines just we have only some subunits which can elicit immune response example herpes simplex virus foot and mouth disease cholera sars these subunit vaccines they are very safe stable precisely defined they are free from extraneous protein proteins and nucleic acid advantages is the purification is a very costly process not will have the same confirmation as an in situ that is our disadvantage coming to dna vaccines dna vaccines they use engineer dna to induce immunological response in the host they use the dna which is engineered or modified to induce immunological response in the host against bacteria parasite viruses sometimes cancer also vaccines the last type they work by introducing an mrna sequence 
which is coded for a disease specific antigen once they produce within the body the antigen is recognized by the immune system so that we prepare it when the real thing enters so we have different types of rna vaccines available in the market for you to understanding the different types of vaccines i mentioned the three types which is available one is non replicating mrna vaccine other one is in vivo self replicating mrna vaccine the last one is in vitro dendrite cell non replicating mrna vaccine so these are available based on their potency and uh, different types of action these three types of rna is available the best example i can quote here is the covid vaccine which we use is also a type of mrna vaccine so with this we come come to the conclusion of that so we have known what is a vaccine what are the types of vaccine what is how we are preparing the different types of vaccines and what is the role and what are the examples so in next powerpoint and subsequent lectures will go into the detail about each and every type thank you